Okay, so I know how Veldra decks work, and having two or three blockers and a removal in hand is going to be quite nice, I think. If they go for like a turn one elf, we can just make them get rid of it. Okay, interesting. Having the tiny bones out first before any discard effects is going to be quite nice, hopefully. And uh, we just now need to get some mana. Voge has definitely become a big, a new big bad here. Or the Schwarmaster. Okay. I think we definitely want to get some extra lands. I, I do really wish I could have killed it with a Triumph here, but I feel as though I'd rather get a land from the discard effect. We'll see. I mean, the fact they're going to get Elves after playing Elves is also going to make the Triumph ineffective, so maybe that was a mistake on my, my part there. But my hope is getting an extra land next turn. We can go for another discard effect and potentially combine with the triumph would be nice. There's the land. But yeah, not having one there, that really stings. Because it forces us to play differently. Wow. Primal adversary. No abilities unless it's kicked. Fair enough. Okay, let's make them get rid of something. I wonder what they choose. I presume the wolf because the elf gives them... Counters, yeah, thought so. Inquisition, let's see what we can take out here. A bit of ramp. Oof. Nasty. No owls in hand, though. And as long as we keep drawing lands, we should be okay. I think Rankle's Prank is going to be quite nice. This is going to save us, I think. As long as they don't get anything like an extra elf. Next turn, they can go for the Xenagos, which is scary. Another wolf. Okay. I think we should be able to just destroy him here, really. Scare Ankles, Prank, Sack, Lose, Discard. We'll get rid of one and two. So that we basically everything goes. And they don't have the red source. And we have a Chimil. So they do get a red source, play the Vojo, we just get rid of it. Oh, look at that. Luckily, we have an answer. But yeah, absolutely obliterated here. We got super lucky. Oh my goodness, textbook. That is exactly how Tiny Bones should be played. Sacrificing your own things for the greater good. And that's winning with the Mono Black deck. Hello, my name's Josh, and I've made a pretty evil deck. But in today's age of historic brawl, what really is evil? I mean, you got a track server, a skill, that crap anyway, so it doesn't really matter anymore what you make. It's going to either attract love or hate. People are very emotional about certain archetypes. A lot of people really don't like discard tribal, which is what this is. Remember, it is technically just a game. I know a lot of people have throw that phrase around, even though there's a lot more to it than that. But it's just one of the mechanics in the game. It can feel pretty bad if you're losing to it. But ultimately, it is one of Black's specialities. So if you're going to be using this deck, you need to kind of clear conscious and just kind of use it for, for what it is. It essentially wants you to discard your opponent's hand over and over again. And then when they have no cards in the hand, you pay six. And then each opponent with no cards in the hand is a 10. That is a cherry on top. That is what you can achieve. But yeah, you just want to kind of play this out and then start discarding. I would highly advise not to just use all your discard without any synergy. So unless you have something like Waste Not Out or what else have we got? Sangromancer or the even more hated Turgrid. I probably wouldn't bother discarding. So try and save them where possible. If you really can, I know it's difficult with the curve and trying to get stuff out on curve and trying to defend yourself, but you need to really synergize well. So it's it's very powerful, but it's very, very vulnerable. It's a glass cannon, really. And if your opponent resolves stuff, then you can be in trouble. But we do have a lot of removal, and Bellas Citadel can just get you back into the game if you are behind a bit. So let's see how this goes today. Okay, I do like this hand. It's a bit slow, but I, I do like it because it has a bit of bit of bite to it. The Triumph is going to be nice to kill something. The Beseech the Mirror gets us any card. And the City Sort Connoisseur, although it is nerfed by Alishnorn, we might be able to get a couple of 
uses. Maybe the Boris Beetle can get us something. Unless they killed Honey Bones and they won't get any synergy there. Lay down arms. Makes our creature mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. And I gain three. That seems pretty good, doesn't it? It's a pretty good card for one white. Hmm. Let's go for Virus Beetle. Get rid of another card. And then next turn, we could even go for Beseech the Mirror. Bargain works with an artifact enchantment. You can sack it. Glass Casket. They're using a lot of removal spells for my small things. Maybe that's all they have. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go for the Connoisseur here, get this out of the way. I don't really want to pay four for Tiny Bones now. It feels like a, a lot. And the good thing about that is we have the Blood Token that we can use for the Beseech the Mirror. If, goodness, so many Exile effects. Okay. They're just going to beat me to death with a Charming Prince. I get it. I see. So we'll get rid of the Blood Token. That went out pretty well. So we can cast something for four from our deck now if we really want to. Mm-hmm. Let's go for Liliana. Nice bit of stable value here. Get rid of the attacker. And the pressure is on for them to deal with Lily. They've already used two pretty good removal spells. Alish Norn comes. No, teleportation circle first. Interesting. Oh, they're going to keep drawing with this. Well, unless it's a card they can play now, they will lose it with the Liliana. Sadly. Let's go for Tony Bones first. I mean, to be honest, it didn't really matter. I, actually, that was probably a misplay. I should have I'm really gone for the discard effect first to get rid of a potential kill spell. But yeah, okay. I think we're in a very good situation now. Annoyingly, if they do get the mana for Elish Norn, well, they do actually have Elish Norn, they can just draw two cards with the spare supplies. Okay, fine. Oh dear, the teleportation circle spare supplies combo. <laughs> Damn it. They just constantly have removal for me. Day of Judgment on the Tiny Bones as well. That's a lot of respect for such a thing. I think we're just going to discard the Burglar Rat here, considering it does exactly the same thing. And we can even play Davriel as well to start dealing some damage. We don't need to make them discard. So Davriel is just a nice little way to... Do something when they have no cards in hand, you know, because normally when they have no cards in hand, discard decks are kind of useless. So, and here she comes. Let's see how many times we can kill her before they get upset. Oh, apparently once. So, there you go. Even though they drew an extra card a turn with spare supplies, um, they didn't want to see how that went. I think they could have probably waited a little bit longer, you know. Drawing an extra card is pretty cool. They're drawing two cards a turn, basically, with spare supplies circles. So I think they did definitely quit too much. But I, it's funny how you can kind of predict how it will go, you know, when it's their turn. They're doing all the things, killing all our stuff. And suddenly when we get a foothold, oh, I can't stay any longer. Yeah, I'll, I'll go and wash my hair or something like that. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it, how that works? To be honest, this is a pretty bad matchup because their commander wants stuff to be in their graveyard. So we'll see how well this works out. Not too confident. Everything we put in the graveyard just enhances this. If it's a reanimated shell as well, it's just going to get stronger too. Although they've already milled three, so it doesn't really make too much difference, I guess. I'm going to start with the Acquisitions Expert, just because I don't really want to lose Tiny Bones to removal, even though he's cheap. Again, putting stuff in the graveyard is not ideal. They're going to put Bitter Reunion in the graveyard, which is interesting because that would have been a good card to use to discard even more things, but they've already got four things in the graveyard. Mesmeric Orb. Okay, they're just going to make us mill. 
I guess we can just keep discarding. If that's what they want to do, they want to fill the graveyard, then go ahead. They've got two mana, I'm really not worried. So they're not going to have any cards in their hand or their library, so enjoy. In fact, the worst part of facing Ms. Miracorp is, is actually the triggers stacking independently. It's so annoying. Milling the Dark Ritual was good because they're not just going to get a free boost of mana there, which could have been pretty integral. And they have no red mana, so it kind of makes sense now why they discarded the Bitter Reunion. Makes perfect sense. Collective Brutality. I think we're going to use this here. Reveal their hand. Get rid of a spell. I'm not too worried about killing the Stitcher Supply. That's not going to kill me. Ugh, okay, they've got those two things. And let's discard even more. What do we want to get rid of? Be the swarm? Yeah, let's just keep up the discard train here. Now, if they do get any reanimation effects, we could be in trouble because the brass dragon is scary. Or we have Turgor. So if we get one mana here, I think we just win the game. Potentially. Depending on what they draw. Right. Priest of Fell Rites. Clutching on. So there's their red source. They've finally got their red source here. So it definitely is like a mind game of what to discard and what to be careful with. So what can she do? Exile tap things. Discard stuff to draw stuff. They hear me the harbinger. Okay, so I really, really, really want to get a land. Just the land. If she gets to minus eight. Hmm, they didn't actually, they didn't use the Nahiri and just opt to not tick. They didn't, do they realize they don't have to actually tick that uh, usability? You can just up tick and not discard if you really want to. So I think what we're going to do here is make each player discard. Um, we'll get rid of Davriel because we kind of want to hold on to Turgrid. And then what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to use Leliana's Triumph in their... after their draw step. Do we want to attack in? I don't think we do. This is very, very risky. Extract the truth. Okay. So right after they draw, we can use Liliana's Triumph, which gets rid of a creature and the card, only card in their hand. This is going to be very cheeky, especially if they draw a land. So draw. Because if they've just drawn the fifth land, it means they now can't play it. Oh, no, it's six mana, isn't it? Okay, fine. But they did actually lose a land, so that is very cheeky. Beginning of each end step. This, this trick is in their turn as well. That's crazily good. And they've just realised they can I tick that. Okay. So we can basically halve all of their things. So if we go for Turgrid and use the ultimate, then we just win the game. Because essentially we're making them pick half their permanence. Oh, so there we go. There's one, 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 two, two, two. I think that's kind of the one you want to do. You want to separate their two non-land permanents. So now we're basically going to get a couple of things. Because they sack them. Turgrid says if they sack them, we get them. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. This is crazy. And then now we can discard to draw something else. Cool. I'm surprised they're still in the game here. They're still playing. They're trying to mill us out. They've got, they're going to have a bit of a job doing that. What can they? What can they even do now? We've just. I mean, maybe the Mesmeric Orb mills us. But I, I honestly don't think that's going to happen. To be perfectly honest, due to the fact that we can just use Tiny Bones, Chimmill as well. Let's just use it here. They've got... They're basically dead in their next turn. The bedrock quakes with my rage. 
swing in. Yeah, I don't think there's much they can do, even if we mill like five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna mill nine, and we're gonna still be alive. There's no board wipe for three mana. And even if they draw, yeah, we just, <laughs> that Lily Ultimate was pretty crazy. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored. And because of that, the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. Okay, a pretty nice hand. Pretty nice hand. They get to go first with Tajik. Artwork there is very, very nice. Um, they've got an aggro deck. I think we need to just have a look. Get rid of something quick. Chimil. I think we get rid of the Overseer. Although annoyingly, does that one return an angel? No, the seven mana one returns an angel. Okay. So it should be fine for a moment. If I can sign it, and then next turn we can go for Tiny Bones. Uh, although saying that, they do have a Swords, so maybe that's a terrible idea. Let's try and eke out the removal with Sangramancer. It's, it's a tempting target. It's got haste. It does. Okay, that's going to be very annoying. Yeah, the haste is going to be destructible as well. It just puts stuff on the battlefield, man. My goodness. That's crazy. That is crazy. Beseech the mirror. One and four. I think we're just going to be a bit patient here. We, we can definitely beseech, but I want to get something like a board wipe when they've got a few more things on the field. Let's make them discard, make them just play a few more things, and then maybe we can beseech for like something like a languish. I can't remember if I've put one in or not. Hopefully. Triumph as well. Nice. Indestructible. Hey, so that the indestructible here is going to be an annoying part. Oh, more removal. Okay, fair enough. I mean, if, if our plan was to actually, you know, languish or whatever anyway, it's, uh, it's going to be fine, I think. And the 21. Well, we could just chimmel now to maximize our mana output. Let's do that. Minus two. Okay. Let's get rid of that, I guess. I mean, it's a free spell. It w I was going to get rid of the Boris Recruit because then we would have had even and then even, but... Yeah. Oof. Oof, that's so brutal. Okay. Our oh, ritual. Hmm. Use the white, uh, the clear mana there. Bargain away the arcane signet. So, what would be good? Languish or. Do we have languish? We do have Languish. That works out pretty well. Let's have some kind of pump effect. No. Nice. Four, five. Now, they do, ha they do have their own Chimmel, so this is going to be a Chimmel off. But they also have six mana for the Sacred Fire, so eh. We'll see. Oh, Etherworks Reservoir. Beautiful. So we're going to hopefully gain some life back, especially with Chimmel on the field. We're going to be playing two spells a turn. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't normally do this because I like to have the mana, but seeing as we didn't draw a laptop, they can land anyway. So we basically get our land back. And we'll pass the turn. Free spell. Oh my. So many... Awesome cards that flew by, including the Citadel. Oh, Chimmel's just so crazy. I can see why it's so expensive, but it's it is quite generic. Have a sin, blimey! If they don't get any more lands, they're gonna really struggle to play anything else here. Just stuck on the lands right now. Sure, sure. Let's just. It's tempting to do this, but. 
This is a way to kill Tajik. I think we just have to keep it for now. Although we do have a couple of ways to kill. T oh, we don't. We don't want to put that on. Cast that one, do we? Extinction event. But again, another way to kill Tajik. Okay, Chimmel on Chimmel action. Who's got the better Chimmel? Also, what a word. Lightning Helix. That's sad times. Interesting. We definitely have a pretty awesome battle here going on. I think we're just going to use this to draw some cards. Fraskas. Oh, wow. Even more ways to kill and so many lands. I think we have the edge, though, because the Aether works. Ooh, duress. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Oh, some big creatures. And we have all kill spells on Earth. So many sack effects. This works out so well. Six mana, what are they going to do? They're going to go for Tajik. Let's use the bigger mana spell here. Are we going to be able to combat them though? Because if they're white-red, they're going to have a lot more creatures than us that can just kick our butt pretty easily. And they've got a Cosmos Elixir, so they've got life gain and draw now as well. Oh, jeez. That's kind of annoying. Uh, they also have the Sacred Fire. Let's get rid of the... So we're going to get rid of the Aurelia, I suppose. So they're getting value, but we're getting to kill their stuff from the hand. I don't know. It's a close one. How on earth are we going <laughs> to... This is turning to like a very unusual control matchup. Ooh, life loss and discard. Let's do those two. Discard one, two. So now they are literally working with Tajik and Chimmel. And they're down to 15. But they do gain two a turn. Four, five, six. They didn't get the mana they needed. They do have the Sacred Fire open. What's this? The Ozolith. Okay. That is... Okay. Although they're just gaining life. Come on. Extract the truth. Hmm... Got nothing in their hand to really. We can deal four damage a turn. Attempted to kill the bur burglar rat. Just gonna pass. If they kill our chimmel, it's gonna be pretty annoying, but. <clears throat> so now we've got this acquisitions expert. I'm very glad I didn't use Extract the Truth. Because it's just going to do the job for us anyway. And if we did extract the truth before, we would have basically missed out on a free discard effect. <clears throat> I don't think they realise how that card works. There's just... Dis doesn't that just... Equal to the number of creatures in your party? Oh, actually. Turns out I don't know how the card works. Yeah, we don't have any, any party members. Depopulate. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Fine. Fraying Omnipotence. Ooh. Lose half their cards in their hand. No way. They just got ECD. That's crazy. Okay, we're really going to struggle now. They got really lucky with that. No way. No freaking way. Okay. We're probably going to lose now. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. Let's go for Tiny Bones here. Well, the good news, I suppose, is... There isn't any good news. There's, there's actually no good news anymore. I think we're going to die. Another board wipe. Okay. And they get Hactos. Now, luckily, we have an answer for Hactos in the Eldest Reborn, so we'll see how this goes. And they're at 19. Oh, jeez. 
75 versus 65. We've been through a lot more cards, but... They do get to resurrect something now with the ECD. <laughs> oh, no. If they get Hactos back, we can sack it again. It's, it's fine. I mean, the Cruelty of Gix, we have a way to get Burles of Citadel to our hand. So this could be our way out of this. They're going to get Aurelia. Yeah, we are definitely in a bit of trouble. Oh, they're going to bring back an Angel. Then it's going to flip. At least we can get rid of the Aurelia before that happens. Let's see if they're gonna get big freaking. They're gonna get a big freaking angel. So we can't cast things that cost three or less. This is unprecedented. They have gone super long with that shimmel. Okay. Oh my 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 goodness. <clears throat> and they get to play another card. What's the CMC of this? Hmm. What do we do? I guess we... Search library for a card, put the card into your hand. Okay. Well, we're going to need a, some kind of... Um, some kind of kill spell. <clears throat> what have we got that can actually kill this that's not three or less mana? I suppose Liliana does the job. New battlefield. That's going to be nine. Uh, Lifelink. Can't cast spells with mana value three or less. How many cards in our graveyard? 19. I guess we have to get this Lily to kill her. And then we lose her, sadly. So we just have to wait for the Citadel a little bit longer. Run now, and, I might spare your life. and then we can use our Elders Reborn to maybe get something oh, back of theirs. We'll see. Scream if it hurts too much. Oh, you're joking. Although we basically have two of the same effect here. From a graveyard. It's, weirdly, we had the same effect on two cards. Can they just stop getting some removal? That would be nice. They've literally had removal for days. You, you are absolutely joking. They had two enchantment removal spells in a row. Jesus. Come on. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'll give up. They literally had absolutely everything they needed. What even is this deck, man? It's like God said, I will bestow you with the ultimate luck that you could acquire. What's it going to be now? Destroy Artifact? Morgul Knife, okay. What the heck? And, and all these, like, weird... Yeah, I'll call it there, guys. I'm very salty about that. We we literally almost had that in the bag, but my goodness. Sheer agonizing remorse. So Tiny Bones is he's very, very good. But well, what are his weaknesses? I guess when your opponent doesn't have any cards in the hand, it's too it's like a double-edged sword, right? You can use the ability to make them lose 10, and that's fantastic. But if they can draw in response to something, you just be very cautious of that. And obviously. The rest of your deck doesn't really operate if you can't discard. So having Tiny Bones is good, but if they keep killing him as well, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, you know the game. It's a finicky game. It's a fine line. It's a glass cannon, which can be very fun. I think it's probably a bit too fragile for me, and it doesn't feel it doesn't really feel that fun using it, but it is very strong. It's it's a strange one. You you have to really enjoy other people's uh uh, <laughs> sadness when you're using this guy. Um, I'm, I've still got that loss in my head where I lost against that guy's Chimil. It was just, oh my God, unbelievable. The amount of luck some people get sometimes. And yeah, you know, sometimes we get lucky as well, but some, but you know, when you, when you've put all the effort to almost win a game and then they just claw it back like that. Yeah. That's just the variance of the game. Chimil, absolutely ridiculous. Is it good for the format? No, definitely not. Cards that don't require any work. Do not really belong in this this game. In my opinion, 
I just think the game needs thoughtful actions, not just like plug in and play. You know, this to me, this is a lot like at the track, sir. It's a lot like, you know, exactly what I mean. It just, it, there's no thought. It's just, oh, randomly, it's kind of like Itali every turn. It's Itali every turn, just for yourself. And that is utterly ridiculous when you consider that we already have a tally at home um but yeah i guess if you really like mono black give it a go it's i mean i'm a huge fan of mono black but i still don't think this is my particular uh, fancy i don't really feel like if i was to choose between this and turgrid i still think turgrid is a bit more interesting i know a lot of people hate turgrid but she is five mana don't forget that five mana is a hell of a lot in one versus one so it's nice that we have two very similar effects or things that care about discard, let's say, but they do operate very differently. So props to the designers for, for doing something there. And I think definitely think when you use them, you come to understand them and appreciate them a bit more. I think everyone has got horror stories of where people go turgid windfall and they get every con you hand. And that is absolutely abysmal feeling that feels terrible. But I think in mono black, it's fine. There's in paper, there's probably a few ways to wheel in black, but in, Historic Brawl, I can't think of any at all to wheel hands. So I think she's safer in a mono-black shell. Obviously, if you're putting her in a blue-black shell, then we're getting a bit scary here, wheeling and getting everything. It, it, yeah, it's it's funny the, where the line is drawn between, okay, this is fine to, yes, this is absolutely busted. So I'll leave, that, I'll leave that for you to make your own conclusions. Use what you want, ultimately. It's a big game. So many pieces. I can't possibly tell you what to use. If you want to use Chimil, go for it. If you want to discard people's hands, go for it. Just do it. Do what you want. This is just a template. This is just an idea to push you in the same direction. I just want to kind of show you what's possible. I'm not sh saying this is the only way. I think a lot of people get basically a bit of butt hurt when I do something different. But ultimately, you know, that's why I made a channel to show people my ideas. If you want to make your own channel, then go ahead. I'm happy to see your own ideas. If someone has a channel... Tell me in the comments below. I'll gladly watch your videos and see see what it's like. Definitely. Always open to see what's out there. If you do want to copy the deck list, it's in the description below. If you want to support the channel, like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. If you want to go further than that, you can donate to the channel via Ko-fi or Patreon, in which you get a free custom video of your choice. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.